Hi everybody, this is Paula Januszkiewicz from Secure and I got over here a very, very special guest that I know for so such a long time, Benjamin Dalpi. Hello, hello. Hello Paula, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine, Black Hat is crazy. Black Hat is always crazy and it's crazy because it's in Vegas. Mm, oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> Vegas and people in Vegas. But exactly, people in Vegas and Vegas definitely adds uh, some craziness points to the whole conference. But um, yeah, thank you so much for coming. My so pleasure. yeah, pleasure, pleasure. So just a couple of words because uh, you are the author of the famous Mimi Cats. Our team also is using it, as you know, in many different ways, and and also during our presentations. But uh, I'm sure, and that's absolutely interesting, at least for me. Uh, what's the history of Mimi Cats? So why did you decide to write it, and what motivates you to continuously develop it? Hmm. Crazy questions. So. Yeah. <laughs> What motivated me for Mimikatz? In fact, it was not Mimikatz at the beginning. It has so many technical names that I want to forget now because it's DLL, DLL pipe, communication, very technical. So, but at the end, I, I assume it, it must be cute. So Mimikatz, it uh, looks like a cute cat in French world. Mm -hmm. But um, I started to code it because I wanted to understand better tools to export private key on Windows, to uh, understand how Pazoash was working. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, I don't remember exactly the dates, but it was, I think, 10 years, years, uh, 10 years ago. Yeah, exactly. mm -hmm. Very crazy. And I was very fan of the Pazoash technique. But at the time I was uh, studying the Pazoash tools uh, on the web, I was not able to find one tool that was working with uh, Windows X64. Um, so I want to create my uh, own tools to understand and to make it work on new systems. Mm -hmm. So the first Mimikatz version was about exporting private key to understand and to make it mm -hmm. and to uh, make Pazoash. Okay. It was, it was working uh, very great, yeah. uh, in fact. But just after the research about Pazoash, I, I go deeper and I found some way to uh, undercover clear text password of mm -hmm. users. In fact, this is not very, uh, it is very near the, the Pazoash technique with the same cryptographic routine and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So in 2011, uh, I achieved to have a version of Mimikatz that uh, was able to uh, pull out clear text password from Windows. It was Windows XP at the time, Windows XP 2003 and Windows Vista 7 uh, just after that. Mm -hmm. So it was the start of Mimikat and the start of crazy conference around the world uh, to present how we can have get like password instead of cracking password. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's that, that simplifies <laughs> all of the different types of pen tests, yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. you, can, uh, you can achieve so, to make some pen tests in one week mm -hmm. with all clear text password of the exactly. main admin. <laughs> exactly. Good, good. And, and what motivates you to, to grow it? Because it's like Windows is continuously changing. Uh, Microsoft is introducing different security solutions. So, like, is it motivating or demotivating? Oh. Well, it's motivating because you finish up different types of versions of Mimikatz, but what is this motivation? <laughs> motivation is about uh, when I discover that Microsoft doesn't care about it because mm -hmm. it was for them at the, at the time, it was not a problem. For customers, I can say it was a problem. Mm -hmm. So I make it evolve, I make it compatible with all Windows version, even Windows 10, because by default, even in Windows 10, uh, there is, there can be password in memory and it, will, it, will, it must be very easy to pull out this, this kind of password. Mm -hmm. But in the same time, uh, I, I understand better Windows, uh, Windows uh, development, Windows API, Windows security. Mm -hmm. And I was interested in other technicals about cryptography, about CNG, about crypto API, about DPI, uh, DPI, pardon mm -hmm. me, my French. Yeah, <laughs> <it's a baby. laughs> um, and for sure, Chabros, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which was very interesting to make some golden tickets, silver tickets, and so so on. So mm -hmm. on, even some hook in Windows to have password, even with credential guard enable, which mm -hmm. is very great in the new Windows version, Microsoft make very good works about it. But come on, you forgot to uh, protect some part of the operating systems. So I'm here not to, not to pawn Windows, that's not my goal, but to, mm -hmm. uh, to explain to our friends, to customers, to the community, to, to the world doing conference that Hey, don't forget that you can have all the products that you want, mm -hmm. all, the, all the options that Microsoft gives you. At the end, this is not protected here, 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 and you must know about it to protect it. Exactly, yeah. So, so what, like how I look at this, at this from my perspective is that Mimikatz played a fantastic role in security awareness 
not only um, of course uh, from from the perspective of, of extracting passwords, but in general infrastructure security because um, one one computer one server being uh, compromised of course can affect the whole organization yeah. security and uh, Mimikatz can help it also from the hacker perspective, but it could also make people aware that that's what's happening. So you should do something so that it doesn't work. Basically, yes. yeah? e exactly. The, the main problem when I was working on the on the area is the theoretical the, theoretic, no, yeah theoretical theoretical yeah. risk yeah. Uh -huh. that uh, you give to the manager. That is uh, yes. Oh come on, this is one number, one percentage that we accept. Come on, no, this is a practical risk. Here is your password. Mm -hmm. oh. We must make something. We must make something. We don't have the choice. It makes a good impression. Yes, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's for sure. That's what I've also noticed. And for me, sometimes it's also surprising that um, when I'm like uh, at the different customer sites, when I mention Mimigat, then still guys do not recognize it. And I'm wondering, where have you been? <laughs> yes. Yeah? For and 10 years, what, <laughs> what, what have you done? Have you done? <laughs> like, were you hiding in a cave or something? So, Mimikas is an absolute must for everybody to know. And, uh, okay, so so we got this. But what's new in Mimikas right now? What's happening? It's Mimikas on vacation now? <laughs> <laughs> At these times, there is no big update like golden tickets on some deep API uh, deeper that I made previously because, in fact, Microsoft, they don't make so uh, so many new stuff in Windows on-premise environment. They focus on Azure stuff, mm -hmm. which is great in US, mm -hmm. but in Europe, we like uh, a lot uh, on-premise stuff for big governments. Sure, sure. And this kind of, there is no new stuff in Microsoft side, so I don't have so many new stuff to code on some mm -hmm. Mimikatz. But it's a big uh, update for me to do because at, with the new Microsoft development cycles, mm -hmm. I must update Mimikatz each six months to, uh, to cover a new version of, new version of Windows, which exactly. is crazy because there is so many new stuff, so many differences between this, all these kind of versions. It's difficult, but it works at the end. And there is no so many deep change, in fact, in the OS. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's very easy to adapt. So you adjust only the certain part and that's yes. it, yeah? And mm -hmm. I can focus more on parts that interest me, like certificates, uh -huh. like TPM, uh, like uh, PKI on mm -hmm, Windows mm -hmm. environments, on smart card, which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. So it's cool for me. I can go on other stuff, especially on Kerberos and TLM and other protocols. Uh. Oh, it'll be interesting to see actually some other tool coming out, out uh, from your research, yeah? Oh, about Kikio. So, yeah, the Kikio, of yeah. course, that's the one thing, but also um, maybe something else, yeah? So that it's going to be like a whole toolkit. I wonder how you're going to name it. Um, in, in fact, I don't want to make something. I, I, I love to have one tool, so yeah, that okay. makes all, okay. which is not very good for uh, antivirus because uh, this is very easy for them to uh, blacklist them. You can always change it, yeah. You yeah, can always very easy. It. <laughs> <laughs> You can change it very easy. But I love to have one tool with me, which fits on the floppy disk, and I can make uh, everything with that. And that's it. Exactly. I, I know you prefer to have some, some tools. We have kits. like <laughs> over 200 tools. And yes, sometimes, I know that. Like, it's nice to have like Mimikas, Enter, then, and that's it, right? Yes. And then everything You're in is like, everything. Yeah, you've got all the things. And for us, it's like all these names of the tools are so long that uh, you have to like, by reading the name of the tool to recognize what is this tool actually doing, yeah? Yeah. So it's, b both approaches are nice. I mean, uh, but but I prefer, like, I, I would say I would prefer your option when you've got like one tool that does it all because at the end, you've got like so many switches, parameters and so on. <laughs> and when, when our team says, okay, so, is this repository that we have at our company 100% covering all the things that we have ever written that represents our toolkit? And everybody's like, oh, you don't know. And Mimikat is the only one. <laughs> yes, that's the only one. But it's also a, a nightmare because when I make some presentation, nobody is uh, aware about what is inside Mimikat. They, they don't know at all. They, everybody knows about the password part because mm -hmm. uh, someone who has password is very easy to understand for the management. But when we, we go deeper about cryptography stuff, about smart card, yeah, about know, right? stuff like that, that's the, nobody the knows. DPAPI, I think. Yes, so DPAPI was very subject, new. Yeah. But uh, come on, it's in Mimikatz for years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but you know how it is. It's it, it's a little bit like this with the open source that yes. uh, you know suddenly everybody like whole world discovers a big vulnerability in some protocol, in some tool, etc. And then it was open source for so many years. Yeah, yeah, because like. Yeah, this is this thing that uh, it's a big debate that has always been there. Like, what's better, like close? It's not very new, so, in like, fact. No. Yeah, here we go. So, so people could definitely read that. And uh, would you recommend doing that to look at the source code and so on? Uh, they will be very disappointed because uh, I'm not very 
I'm not a very professional coder, so I, I code like I uh, like I live. It's very free. <laughs> <laughs> but it works. <laughs> but it, exactly. But uh, as I don't make a lot of documentation and comments, the only way to understand it is to look at the source code. Not to look about vulnerabilities. It is not a tool that you must run in production environment, of course. But just to understand how it works and to make your own tools about it. So I'm very happy because I know that you make that. Yeah, you, you look at my works and you create your own tools to make uh, adaptation to understand how it works. So I'm very happy about it because at the beginning, and even now, my, uh, my Mimikatz is designed as a POC tools. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, I made that, but come on, create your own ones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because without uh, creating, you will not be able to understand. Mm -hmm. And there is not a lot of people that creating uh, some programs around it or new ones about I know, it. So, I know exactly what you mean. So I'm very happy <laughs> to see, uh, oh, there is a polar toolkit. Hey, yes, yes, I know exactly from where it comes. And I'm very happy to the new stuff to make. Uh, Here we go. Yes. So exactly. So to push forward, push forward. Absolutely. Yes. This, is, this is good. But you know what I'm thinking? That if there is someone in this world that will ever judge you by the quality of coding, <laughs> then this is a person that has never used uh, Mimikatz. <laughs> yeah. Oh, in fact, I, I, I... That would be my I, statement here. Yes, I, I, I think it Usefulness can be. Usefulness versus judgment. But uh, unfortunately, there is a, a big uh, big gap uh, between coders and uh, people that can use uh, tools. Uh, All so right, I get that. I, I, <laughs> so I'm very happy to, uh, to understand both worlds. Yeah, uh, yeah, me too. But Absolutely. it's not very usual. Uh, we have, we, we don't meet a lot of people that can't code their own tools to make real attacks or real uh, assessments. So, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So when I when I find someone that is a very professional programmer, I say yes, but go in real production environment to make an assessment. You will see that's not the same world. So we don't we don't we don't have the same priority. Absolutely, absolutely. I totally know what you mean. Yeah. So, so in our case, when we are in a project, we're like, oh, we don't have a tool for that. Let's just write it. Yeah. Exactly. Bring it on. <laughs> so you are you are lucky to have people that can code it. Absolutely. Uh, but the, a lot of persons they adapt. See, even uh, this is very this is not very usual to find some people that are able to adapt ex existing programs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just meet people that try to use existing uh, programs, and even that they are not very good at all. So. Uh, creating new programs, we are not a lot. Okay. This is very small world so when own programmers in Infosec. True, true. I, I totally see it the same way. Would you ever reconsider writing a book about identity? <laughs> I, I, I'm not even considering considering to write documentation so a book. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what a crazy story! I, I'm not enough passion for that. In okay, fact, okay. Uh, when so I write when I write something, say, I want to make other things. I want to make other things. So it will be never finished. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in IT, I guess not many people like to actually write documentation, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're always laughing that if you if you get a project, then you need to have an assistant for the project to actually write the report after you. Never been having an assistant. You must be passion for that. So I don't want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's good, it will be quite hard. Okay, great. So I'm uh, not taking your time anymore. Thank you so much for, for allowing uh, to, to get this conversation to happen. And also, uh, yeah, absolutely great to see you again. Yeah? It was a pleasure, Paula. Yeah, again. lovely. Pleasure. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you.